morning. Our first prelude is in the handout, the song Sayo Lamang.
next prelude is in the handout, the song Only This I Want. Good morning, everybody. Our readings for today's Mass are on page 934. If you like to use a ribbon, page 934. 
And our opening hymn is number 470. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather here as brothers and sisters and we pray for everything going on in our lives from this last week, what is coming this next week, we'll pray for our world, but also for conversion in our hearts. We may grow in our faith and for forgiveness for our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessing Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus said the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies. It is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is an encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. Of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said to him in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. The 
this last week we had uh, oops, sorry. this last week we had three listening sessions just talking about this partners in the gospel talking about the whole issue with the parishes and I think they went fairly well I, I hope they were helpful for the people who came just to reflect and to talk to other people and and hopefully now praying for just praying for the Holy Spirit to be working through our local church through all of these things I was thinking about it and you know some things come to mind about how we approach any problem in our life right the first thing we often do when we have a problem in our life is we look for the easiest solution to the problem it's just human nature we all do it there's a problem stated what's the easiest way to solve the problem to just kind of make it go away but we often know also that that first solution, it's not the right solution. And so to use the gospel today and the theme for the homily today, it's not the authentic solution. And we know that sometimes we have to talk ourselves into the right solution. Because when God is at work in your lives, in our lives, and he's trying to help us work through a problem, he wants to go to the core. He wants to really see where, where that problem started. What is the deepest part of it? And then find healing there and the solution there. And so authenticity is very important. In the gospel today, you have this father who has these two sons and perhaps any dad or any mom could relate to this little scenario with these two boys. One he goes and he asks him to do something, and there's just this honesty. So I'm not going to do it, right? But then there's a conversion. There's a change of heart. There's a movement towards authenticity in the heart of that young man, right? And then the second example, it's the opposite. It's a movement away from authenticity. It's putting that mask on to look like he's a good son but inside he's not there's a lack of authenticity there so i went through and i created a couple little scenarios just to to share just to put, put a little more flesh on this idea so here's my scenario i want you to pretend for a moment that you are in need of having one of your kidneys removed now don't ask me why or they did that last night at mass it's not tight <laughs> It got me distracted, so no, don't, we don't need to do that. Just assume you need a kidney removed, all right? So you go to a doctor and you say to the doctor, doctor, I need a kidney removed. Uh, can you do the procedure? And the doctor says to you, well, I have read a book on it. And I was in medical school for a little while, but you know, medical school is just so hard. It's so expensive. I just dropped out and I figured I would just act like a doctor. Now you're thinking, hmm, I think I should probably go somewhere else. So you decide to get a second opinion. So you go to a different doctor and you say, doctor, I need to have my kidney removed. Can you do the procedure? And the doctor says, well, I went all the way through medical school, I graduated, I have my license, I'm in good standing with the hospital, I've done many of these procedures, and they've all been successful, so yes, I can do that. Now, which one would you choose? So Jesus, you notice how Jesus starts the gospel today? He says, what's your opinion? Now, there's clearly a right and a wrong answer to the parable he uses, but he still asks us what our opinion is. He's looking for authenticity in that, right? I'll give you another little example to bring it closer to home. Let's say a person's Catholic and they want to go to confession. They want to confess their sins. They want to be forgiven. And so they go to the priest and they say to the priest, Father, can you hear my confession and forgive me of my sins? And so, much to their surprise, the priest says, he says, well, I do have the prayer that the priest says, and I am dressed like a priest, because I bought the clothes to do that, 
And I was in the seminary, but you know, man, it just takes forever to get through the seminary. So I dropped out and just decided to act like a priest. Now, as Catholics, we immediately the alarm bells go off. There's a lack of authenticity to that. It's not real. Somebody's pretending they're acting like they're a priest, but they are not a priest. Just like the first example, that person was not a doctor. And so when somebody pretends, when somebody acts like they can do something, but they really can't do it, there's a lack of authenticity, people get hurt. So the person goes to the second priest, and the priest says, well, I've made it through all the way through the seminary, and I graduated, but more importantly, a bishop validly ordained me, I'm in good standing with the whole Catholic Church, and so yes, I can hear your confession, and I can absolve you of your sins by God's power. Now, it's just clear which one is right and which one is wrong. But Jesus still gives us the choice. And so I want to bring this back just to all of us as disciples, all of us as followers of Jesus, there is authenticity, and then there can be a lack of authenticity in being the disciple. Are there times, and I'm going to include myself in this, there are times when I act like I'm a Catholic, I'm a Christian, but deep down there is a lacking of authenticity in a, in a particular moment where my, my words, my behavior, or my thoughts do not reflect Jesus. And so the question is, what does it look like? What is your opinion? What does it look like when a Catholic is authentic? When they are an authentic disciple? When you have those casual moments out in the world, right? And so I know you all are here, so this would not be the case for you all, but if a person were to be talking to their neighbor over the fence and religion comes up and, and, and the person says what we hear way too often, oh yeah, I'm Catholic, but I don't do the church thing. Really what they just said, I'm a Catholic, but I'm not authentic. I'm just acting like I'm a Catholic. Because we know that that's not what Christ intended. And we could, we could imply that to many different scenarios. And so the essence of authenticity for us, because we all know we're not perfect, is that there's always going to be a movement of the first son in us. That sometimes we don't get it right the first time, but we keep trying. That's authenticity. We keep trying to be authentic, to grow in our faith. I want to give a couple of examples, little examples. Today's the feast day of a great saint for our church, a truly beloved saint for our church. Who's the saint today? Saint Therese, right? Saint Therese of Lisieux. I can talk about her for a whole hour. I won't do that. Her family is one of the most unique and beautiful families that we have in modern church history. You can talk about that, all, you know, just all, her whole family. When she entered the Carmelites, so she was a Discalced Carmelite sister. The Discalced Carmelite sisters are cloistered, which means they're going to live in their convent, convent for their whole life. And their job in the world is to pray for us. That's their job, right? They pray for us. When Therese entered her order, there was a, a moment for her where she was really trying to find where she would fit in with all of salvation history. And she really had this deep desire to become a missionary. Now, Carmelite sisters do not become missionaries. That's not their charism. But she just had this burning desire to share the faith, which is great. We actually have a connection, though, to her in a special way, because you have, so she lived back in the late 1800s, and during that time, she picked a place where she wanted to be a missionary, and it was called the Oregon Territories. 
which is here, right? This is before even Washington State existed. She wanted to come here to be a missionary. Now, we would say that's great, and we would say, oh, yes, we, I wish they would have allowed her to do that, but that's not necessarily how God works. He doesn't just take that first impulse, but he wants to purify it. What was her vocation? There was a time, too, she had just this deep, deep love for the Eucharist. And so there was a time where she would say in her autobiography, she wanted to become a priest. There's problems with that, right? I could save that for another homily. She was not a rebel. She was not trying to break, you know, down barriers in the church. It was just her love for the Eucharist. But that was not to be her vocation. And so it's learning how to be able to discern rightly so that we can stay authentic to what God is calling us to. God wanted her right where she was at. She would dedicate her life to praying for missionaries. She would consider herself as, if you will, the backup, the, the one who kind of propels those missionaries forward in her prayers. She would dedicate herself to seminarians and priests. She would write letters to them, encouraging them and helping them, giving them counsel. She had no formal theological training, but everybody who read her writings knew that she was one of the most astute students of the Trinity of God. She would sit and listen to God every day. Later in her life, it would attract the attention of even the Pope. And the Pope would make her a doctor of the church. The Latin word doctor means teacher. There are very few doctors in the Catholic Church in 2,000 years. And the Pope made her one of them. A lot of theologians were upset about that, who had all the formal training. But it's because they forgot what authenticity is. Authenticity is not just sitting and reading a book, but it is authentically being the person that God has called them to be. And she did it well. Another little example. In a couple days, we have the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi's conversion or reversion back to the faith, because he was always Catholic, but he just never took his faith very seriously. And so there was this moment where God was really speaking deeply to him. And so he went and spent 30 days in this private retreat. I'm not sure you could really call it a retreat, because when he came back, he, it looked like he had been homeless for 30 days. He hadn't showered, bathed, he hadn't changed his clothes, he hadn't shaved. He looked like a homeless person. When he came back into town in Assisi, people were so startled by him, by his appearance and his behavior, they started throwing rocks at him and spitting on him. They thought he had lost his mind. But there were some who recognized authenticity, and they started to listen to him. One such individual, his name was Bernard, Bernard was one of the wealthiest and most influential people in the town of Assisi. He would have known Francis's parents. And even though Francis's own father disowned him, Bernard listened. One day Bernard invited Francis to stay in his home to come over, and he listened to him talk. Bernard invited him to spend the night. He had a, some quarters, some, a room set up for him. And the reason was Bernard wanted to see if he was authentic. Because we all know when we can see somebody who acts holy or who acts a certain way. But we want to know, is it real? And so he actually spied on him. He watched him. And through the night... Francis prayed the whole night. And Bernard watched him. 
and real not realized that he was authentic. In the morning, Bernard said to Francis, Francis, can I follow you? Up to this point, Francis had no followers. And so Francis said to him, Bernard, if you'd like to follow me, you have to sell and give away everything you own. Then you can follow me. Within a week, Bernard had given away everything. Because he had found that pearl, he had identified authenticity. There was no doubt left in his mind. Bernard would become the first Franciscan brother to follow Francis. And I would like to just bring this back to the core of our faith. And it is the authenticity of the love of God for humanity. It is so authentic that God himself sent his son. His son who had authentic love for us. That in any temptation there may have been or could have been or anything we could have done to have caused God to doubt his love for us. He overcame all of it. This world was given one authentic savior. And 2,000 years later, we still come and worship him. We come and desire to be close to him, to listen to him, and to follow him. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, and the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. God not me. made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended to heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and dead this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord to give of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, that the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. I have spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. True sorrow for sin requires a change of heart and attitude. Our prayers today include our will to live out what we believe. For a spirit of penitence in all members of the Catholic Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders who will speak and act for the sake of those who have no voice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the conversion of men and women enmeshed in lives of crime and vice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the respect of all life, especially the unborn, and all those whose lives do not have the protection of law, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the 
petitions of your sons and daughters who seek to do your will day by day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 676. <clears throat> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Therese, Saint Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I offer you this virtual communion prayer. The blood of Christ. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I decide to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at last virtually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is in the handout, Panalangin sa Pagiging Lukas Pala.
Number six seven zero.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. This Thursday morning, Mass will be at 9 a.m. It will not be at 10.30, so 9 a.m. Uh, the group that is praying for priests, the Prayers for Priests Ministry, is gathering this Friday at 7 p.m. in our Adoration Chapel. If you'd like to join them, please feel free or contact the office for more information. This coming Friday is, our, is First Friday, so... We have exposition all day, all the way through the night. We also have confessions from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So please feel free to join us. Uh, today at 4 p.m. we do have blessing of the animals. It is outside, so please don't bring them inside. Um, uh, if you do have a pet that's a little wild or maybe not so used to being socialized with other animals, please have them on a leash. And, and I will have my tarantula in the cage, so there will we not be commingling of animals. Um, 40 Days for Life is something we're, we're, in the, we're currently in. If you'd like to join us for prayer, we, we go on Fridays at 3.30 p.m. to the Planned Parenthood here in Marysville. Just, again, it's just peaceful prayer. Well, it's peaceful on our part. We're just there to pray. And we're not there in judgment of anybody. We are there praying for everybody. So feel free to join us. Also on Saturdays, if you'd like to join our Hispanic community, they go to the Planned Parenthood in Everett at 11 a.m. And they, and they pray in Spanish. Uh, on the back table, we do have signature sheets for an initiative. It's initiative 2081. This initiative is about parental rights with regards to their children in schools. It, it ter in terms of rights to review instruction materials, uh, to see their own personal records, and to be able to opt out of any activities that are considered contrary to uh, parents' belief. So um, it's an initiative. If you'd like to sign it, it is in the back table available for that. Uh, when we do, so we have the code to the church. We have the code to the chapel. I love giving all of you permission to come in 24 hours a day we do ask for people to be respectful of the environment, to not be bringing food and drink into the church or the chapel, and, and also just behavior. So if other people are praying, please be respectful of other people praying. So, okay. Um, we have a monthly discernment meeting for young men ages 13 to 18. Uh, we do meet at St. Mary Magdalene in Everett, but uh, we have a way to help people get there. If anybody has any teenagers, uh, young men who are in that age bracket, and just open, just open to meeting with a group of priests, praying with them, have, sharing dinner, just asking questions, uh, please come and talk to me. We have, we, have a, we have three from our community right now who go, um, but certainly would love to have more. Okay? Uh, the Knights of Columbus breakfast this morning is going to help support the Coats for Kids. So uh, please join them and please be generous with that. The Faith Library is also open for families, so there are books available today. We are doing that once a month now. And the office is open after Mass. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Our sending forth song is in the handout, the song Mapapalad. <laughs>
Ba ba ba.